the Rembrandt House Museum at the Joden Breestraat No. 4 in Amsterdam, built in 1606, which also happens to be the year of birth of Rembrandt van Rijn from Leiden. Sheer coincidence, because only in 1639, at the age of 33, does Rembrandt, now a wealthy man, buy this house for the pretty sum of 13,000 guilders and makes it his home for the next two decades. When Rembrandt is 50, he can't pay his debts anymore and has to leave home and hearth without any possessions. But 400 years later, the house is still there, now a museum. The rooms where Rembrandt lived and worked, first with Saskia von Eulenberg, and later, after she had died, with Gertje Dirks and Hendrik Stoffels, have been restored to their original state as much as possible. In Rembrandt's day, the walls were full of paintings, by Rembrandt himself, by his students, and by other famous artists. Now other paintings hang on the walls. When Rembrandt was declared bankrupt, all his possessions were carefully inventoried by an official from the Chamber of Bankrupt Estates before being auctioned. Those descriptions were used to furnish the Rembrandt house according to the way it used to be. And some of Rembrandt's drawings also show what the interior of the house must have looked like at the time. In this room, we find all the ingredients Rembrandt used to make his etchings. The Rembrandt House Museum has a nearly complete collection of etchings by Rembrandt and is the only museum in the world that permanently has the famous artist's etchings on display. Rembrandt's command of the art of etching was unparalleled. His precision and virtuosity and his handling of his subject matter have turned out to be inimitable. It's almost incredible how he represented the most varied themes on very small but also on larger surfaces. Landscapes, biblical scenes, human figures, self-portraits. Even in his etchings he played with light and dark, the so-called clear obscure, one of the main hallmarks of Rembrandt's work. This is where Rembrandt, in 1642, probably painted his most famous work, the corporal ship of Captain Franz Banning-Koch and Lieutenant Willem van Reutenberg, better known as the company of Captain Franz Banning-Koch, and even better known as the Night Watch. An inaccurate title, but concise. In the kitchen, it was always warm and comfortable. This is where food was prepared and consumed and conversations were held. The kitchen was the centre of the household. The counter was bathed in light and there was an indoor water pump. At that time, in the early 17th century, the maid would sleep in the box bed in the kitchen. Behind this door is the inner courtyard. Maybe a night watch in the making once stood there, covered of course, under a wooden stand. This is the saal or back room. It was Rembrandt's living room. It also had a box bed. Separate bedrooms didn't exist yet. There have always been a lot of paintings on these walls. Now there are beautiful paintings on display from Peter Lustmann, who taught Rembrandt in Amsterdam. Many of Rembrandt's famous paintings were painted here. The studio faced north, ideal for an even spread of light. And above one of the windows, Rembrandt hung a piece of linen 
so the light was diffused even more evenly. After Rembrandt had been declared bankrupt, his possessions got auctioned. Most of the objects didn't bring in very much money. These fancy helmets and lances were used by Rembrandt and his students as examples when painting historical or biblical scenes. Rembrandt had one of his co-workers or students prepare his paints, a pretty cumbersome task. Rocks of all kinds were ground up and the powder was then mixed with linseed oil. Rembrandt was an obsessive collector of all kinds of unusual objects. The so-called art room was full of artificialia, objects made by human hands, and naturalia, objects from the world of flora and fauna. This obsession cost him a fortune and eventually led to his destitution. The collection that has been brought together here is not the original one, of course. That was sold right after his bankruptcy. Everything being shown here has been selected or reconstructed as meticulously as possible. In 1997, a refuse pit was discovered in the courtyard in which these objects were found, among others. Definitely from the 17th century and almost definitely from the time Rembrandt lived here. As mentioned before, the Rembrandt House has a large collection of etchings by Rembrandt. They can be seen in the new wing of the museum next to the old, real Rembrandt House. In the museum shop, a large selection of souvenirs and books are for sale in all sorts and sizes. Wonderful reminders of the painter Rembrandt van Rijn and of his beautifully restored house from the Dutch Golden Age.